What does it look like when a client doesn't pay? Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the video shop. This video might be a bit risky. I've made it specifically to talk to a client who didn't pay me. Scott, his name's Scott. The last time I reached out to Scott, he was too busy to talk. So instead, I'm addressing him here directly. For those of you watching who aren't Scott, and I guess that's most of you, briefly, this is what happened. Scott asked me to animate this logo. There was no brief, except maybe something with a punky aesthetic. I spent over 20 hours on it, and as always, you can view the whole workflow on my sister channel with Video Shop Longplay. I've talked in previous videos about my rates, and if we say generously that this is maybe three chargeable days, I might charge two to three thousand dollars. But as of today, when I posted this, Scott hasn't paid a penny. We'll look at the finished animation shortly, as well as some of the techniques that I used, but this will be very different to the normal videos on my channel. And honestly, I think my approach to this may divide some of you. In this video, I'm gonna talk directly to Scott. It's not about picking a fight. I just thought, well, I'm obviously not doing any more unpaid work. So how can I spin this into a positive? Okay, let's get started. So Scott, I think maybe one of the things that you might have had an issue with was you wanted a simple logo animation. I don't think you were expecting footage from an obscure Tim Curry film from the 1980s. Let me explain where that came from. You wanted a punk aesthetic, so it wasn't a huge leap to land on this. Two reasons, and yes, I am this basic. It's fantastic, and one of the characters is called Spider-Punk. And it looks like so much fun to animate. So, three reasons. But I wanted to look beyond this and explore punk films and imagery generally. I created a mood board, which I'm generously going to call reference, but really it was just stuff that I was planning on stealing. These are grabs from Spider-Man, some of which were only a few frames long in the film. These are photos I took at an exhibition I went to last year on street art. This is Jodie herself and some promo imagery from her Instagram. And then some punk style imagery I thought was interesting. I wanted to go beyond the obvious Jamie Reed stuff. I looked at footage from a selection of films, all of which are loosely tied into the punk movement. Not really having a plan, just visual crate digging and getting a feel for the era. I wanted the sense of punk from the 70s and 80s to feed into Jodie's logo animation somehow. I had a vague idea at this point that I wanted to take different bits from these films and collage them, like a punk motion design version of the Sgt Pepper cover. Scott, as you already know, I definitely didn't achieve that aim. Just a quick note to all the non-Scots watching. I will talk about the budget later, but for now let's just say I didn't have all the time in the world to work on this. So I had to narrow the scope and abandon the idea of collaging lots of different films. Instead, I decided to use this clip that I mentioned before. It's got a edgy, punky, anarchic vibe to it, and as pure footage, it was just kind of fascinating. I thought it could work as a fun collage, which leads us into Jodie's logo. I could cut bits out and add in some of the fun Spider-Man stuff that I'd seen. I re-edited the footage slightly, then focused on grunging it up and add in silly little touches. This isn't difficult technically, and actually the process for this sort of thing doesn't have to be elegant or streamlined. One of the fun things about this aesthetic is leaning into the messy nature of things, just as how punk posters of the 70s would have been cut out and collaged. Let's look at the finished logo animation that I sent to Scott. There's no audio, so I'll just yak over it. There's the letters of Jodie's name dropping out of the TV here. I'm not sure how obvious that is. Then we've got fun kinetic type explosion as the TV hits, and then we're into the logo. I kept the whole thing mostly monochrome, so the pink of the logo pops when it comes on. And that's it. Again, no idea what Scott thought when he saw this. So I'll talk about the budget and what the hell this video is all about soon, but I told Scott that I'll be giving away his project file. This isn't unusual for me, if you're familiar with this channel, but to give away a client's files is a big no-no. Definitely don't do this if you're planning on having or keeping a career in the industry, but this is a bit of an unusual case. Anyway, again, for non-Scots watching, who either want the project file or you wanna play around with this kind of look for your own animations, let's just quickly look at the project file itself. Up here in this folder, AA Final, there's the final logo animation here, and then I just exported the logo on black and white and sent those to Scott as well. So this main logo comp, split into four pre-comps for each shot. If we go into the rooftop one, it's not the it's not the tidiest timeline. <laughs> I'm leaning into the messy nature of it. So if you're doing this sort of thing, what you want to do is identify bits that you want to isolate and have cut out from, say, the background. And then you can either rotoscope them or do what's known as a junk mat. And you actually might prefer the junk map because it sort of looks a little bit more rough and ready, a little bit more cut out. And you also might need to create a clean version. So if we just solo this background layer, then on top we've got a comp here, which is a clean 
version or allegedly clean. So this is using the contents where fill in After Effects. If it's moving, if the background's still, you can use Photoshop generative fill or whatever, or even clone stamp it. And obviously this isn't a perfect result, but it didn't need to be for this sort of thing. It's messy and rough and ready anyway, so I wasn't gonna spend time fixing this. So I've actually pre-rendered some of these elements for the project file. Normally the contents where I feel will create a PNG sequence. So if we just turn layers on sort of one by one, so just randomly add in dot patterns, sort of any textures that sort of take my fancy. So that's kind of the nice thing about working this way. You just kind of mess things up as you go along. So this layer is the, the girls cut out. So this has been rotoed and then I've just sort of created an effect where it looks sort of cut out and then there's almost like a posterized color effect and I've used a bit of choker and turbulent displays to sort of choke out the edges. Again, if you want more of an in-depth look at it, I've chaptered the workflow videos so you can just jump to those particular points if you want. You can also mix up the frame rates as well. So I've got a posterized time effect and I've set a frame rate of 10 on here. So if you scrub through, you can see that the the background's moving at a different frame rate to the girls are. And then here I found images of Scott wearing this sort of helmet thing on his Instagram. So the idea is he's one of the people dropping the TV off the roof and then just, you know, silly little touches, adding a sort of a devil horned emoji over there. Then on top, you've got some photocopy textures, you know, set to, set to add, just moving around, just messing around and, you know, making it look as random as possible. And then here I've just Googled the singer, Jodie Langford, and just randomly put the search results just um, in there. So with this cutout effect, you could go one step further and make it look like a ripped paper effect. That could take a while though. If only there was a way to achieve that effect procedurally, say dropping your cutout footage into a pre-comp. Oh dear, this is embarrassing. I had no idea I'd end up plugging one of my old tutorials. I'm mortified. Whatever you do, don't watch that. You might also find yourself having to track footage or do manual tracking, which is what I had to do with this shot. And as I pointed out, and I'm not sure how clear it is, but these letters are letters from Jody's name and also in the background. Uh, again, I don't know how clearly you can see that, but they're there. And again, we stick to the supplied frame rate of 24 for this. So you're going from sort of like a sort of stuttery, stuttery mixed frame rate in the shot before. And then this one is more fluid as the camera is following the TV down in, in slow motion. And then the next shot probably took the most time, but was the most fun. So we've got different frame rates for the background people cut out. And then the two main people who, looking at the shot itself, I think are almost definitely stunt people giving their best acting, but their timing's not quite right. Then we've got a straight lift from the Spider-Man text, and then a smashy explosion thing here. And again, you know, all the same things, just textures, photocopy sort of overlays and dot patterns. Then we've got the sort of same cutout effect here. So they just stand out a little bit more from the background. Had to use Photoshop generative fill, just to be able to sort of frame the shot better and just expand it at the top and bottom. For pressing you here, there's a bit of camera shake when the TV lands. Got a blur adjustment layer and then just silly little touches here. And if you spotted what this quote's from, 10 house points to Gryffindor. No rhyme or reason behind this. They turn pink, pink TV whatever and then finally into the logo got more grunge and an expression controlled textures comp got a control null up here you can you can use this and apply it to different projects if you want you can manually it's all using fractal noise and you can you got checkboxes to turn scratches on and off or dust them out so the logo um talking expressions the logo has got uh, an expression to mix between the tight faces in this bit here as it comes on. So you're seeing different tight faces for the different letters. When you open the project, there's a very good chance that you won't be seeing exactly what I'm seeing. And the reason is if you go into here, and then if we go into this comp here, 
This project isn't quite pre-comp how some of my other projects, but not too far off. So we've got, these are the main pre-comps. If you need to change the typefaces, it's gonna help if you know expressions a little bit, but if you don't, what you can do is, we've only got one layer in each one, okay? And then we've got layer markers to denote the different uh, characters that we're mixing between. And then we've got whole keyframes on the source text for those. But then if we press EE, if we go into this expression, you can see there are, these are the different typefaces that we're mixing between. Now, if you don't have these installed on your computer or active on Adobe fonts, you're not gonna see them. But what you can do is just say, select one Futura. And then what we can do is go in here, go text font. And then what you can do is you can select a font that is on your computer and let's change it to, um, I don't know, compact to black. Okay. And just add a comma. Okay. Now you'll just need to do that for each of the other typefaces that are there and then it will work for you. So I don't know how obvious it is in the final animation, but this TV has got a sort of rough hand drawn layer on top of it where I've just manually drawn over frame by frame. Probably didn't need to do it frame by frame, could have done it every, any other, every other frame. If you wanted to do something like this, one way is to use the paint tool in After Effects. And so this time lapse here shows you the process of doing that. You need to double click on the layer, then it's an effect. I found it easier to apply the paint effect onto the layer that you're tracing so you can actually see what you're doing. And again, you can view this process in real time in the workflow video. That's it for the walkthrough of the project. If you've got any questions, you can ask in the comments below. So you're probably all wondering, what did Scott think of the animation? Why is this a risky video, which is supposedly gonna divide viewers? For Christ's sake, what was the budget? Why am I calling Scott out directly in this video? And is there gonna be a fight? Let me fill in some of the gaps. I was listening to Six Music recently and this song came on. I loved it. So I looked it up and saw it was made through a non-profit record label. I reached out to Scott and asked if I could use the track for my showreel. Honestly, anything to avoid scrolling stock music sites. And in return, was there any work that they needed? Scott responded, yes, could I animate this logo? So the budget was nothing. We have just lost cabin pressure. Okay, before you destroy me in the comments, let me explain. Yes, I'm talking directly to Scott with this video. Hello. That wasn't a lie, but why? I knew that I couldn't do everything I wanted to with this animation. I had to rein it in somehow and draw a line under it. Scott actually did like the animation, but what if you wanted amends or more of the same? I couldn't get sucked into the usual client aftercare. I needed to move on to paid work because I can't pay my mortgage or buy food with hugs. I tried, but now I'm banned from Sainsbury's. Oh. So I said, not only could he have the project file, I'd record a tutorial for him personally. He's an editor, so he's got video experience. He could either familiarize himself with After Effects or pass the files on to someone else to do more work. So this video is basically a handover for Scott, giving him a toolkit he can use if he wants to create similar content. I appreciate you might still want to enact some kind of pain on me, so here's the point. For better or worse, there's a good chance a lot of us in our industry are gonna find ourselves with more time on our hands than we normally would. Also, budgets may be squeezed. Doing something like this kills two birds with one stone. I'm getting a track that I would otherwise have to pay for and also contributing to what I think is a good cause. I'm not gonna wang on about karma or paying it forward, but hey, you could think about it that way if you wanted. So the next time you sit down to start on a personal project, maybe see if there's a project or cause you can help out with at the same time. I treated this as a proof of concept. It's a style I love working in and I want to explore more. Doing stuff like this is a good way to experiment with a technique or aesthetic without financial pressure or a client breathing down your neck. And in these pretty toxic times we live in, perhaps more importantly, you can feel good knowing that you've done something altruistic or you're trading services with someone instead of just doing unpaid personal work. You can still chuck it on your socials for clicks. So what does unpaid motion design look like? Well, maybe this. One last thing, Jodie isn't Taylor Swift or Adele. My point is, to anyone planning on doing work like this, if Taylor or Adele is paying you thousands of dollars, you will almost definitely need to get permission to use copyright material. 
but for someone with a small Instagram account, the worst that might happen is that you may have to remove a post that gets flagged for copyright. But I honestly can't see that happening in this case. It's such a short clip and the footage has been cut up and treated. There's a whole conversation to be had about fair use, appropriation and copyright infringement. My God, how boring. But it's beyond the remit of this video. So if you want to be totally safe, apply this style to footage you've shot yourself or find copyright free footage. Oh, and very last thing. Since I featured this footage so much in the video, I want to point out where you can find this film. It isn't easy to track down here in the UK, but in the US you can stream it or even pick up a Kino Lorber Blu-ray. They're a fantastic distributor of cult films for all you fellow film nerds. Anyway, that's all for this video. Sorry if you thought you were about to witness an epic punch up, but honestly, it's for the best. I'd be useless in a fight. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.